We are pleased to have with us Kong Do, CEO of BioV, trading on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol B-I-V-I. -I. Kong, thanks very much for being with us today. Great. Thank you so much for having me back. Pleasure to be here with you, Craig. BioV recently announced results from two phase two trials for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Can you give us a summary of what you have found? Well, we recently announced data from two separate trials where we found any 3107 did the following. First, it enhanced motor control for Parkinson's patients. Second, it enhanced cognition and improved biomarkers for Alzheimer's patients. And thirdly, it showed that it can impact the biological aging process by reducing the biological age by over three years. Kong, it is amazing that one drug can work for multiple diseases. How is that possible? Well, it all has to do with inflammation. Right? We believe that inflammation is the root of many things that go wrong in the body. Many things contribute to inflammation, including the aging process itself and the buildup of amyloid plaques and health tangles in Alzheimer's, for example. Our drug candidate, ME3107, blocks inflammation at just the right place and prevents the production of something called TNF-alpha, which is considered the master regulator of inflammation. Kong, let's go deeper into Alzheimer's for a minute. You have said that NE3107 reversed cognitive decline and helped patients enhance their cognition. How does this result compare to the ISI and Biogen drugs, which have also reported positive results recently? Well, first of all, we need to know that cognition or cognitive abilities are measured using a number of different assessment tools, and something called the ADAS COG scale is the most commonly used. The trial that showed patients taking 3107 for three months saw a reversal of their cognitive decline. This means that in the study, these patients saw a 2.2 point improvement in their ADAS COG score. In contrast, the ASIDES drug, lecanemab, slowed the cognitive decline. This means that patients treated with lecanemab continued to worsen in their ADAS COG scores but at a 27% slower rate than untreated. So a side drug slows the cognitive decline, whereas any 3107 reversed the cognitive decline and led to an enhancement in cognition. Kong, in what other ways is any 3107 different from the other drugs in development for Alzheimer's? Well, Craig, any 3107 has a completely different mechanism of action. The vast majority of Alzheimer's drugs that have have been in development have tried to reduce amyloid plaques and tau tangles in the brain. But decades of effort have not produced a single plaque or tangle reducing drug that reversed the cognitive decline. And in fact, in recent years, we learned that these plaques and tangles themselves are inflammatory in nature, meaning that they lead to the um, creation of inflammation in the brain but so do many other factors cause inflammation. Thus, if you focus only on reducing plaques, you've just reduced the portion of inflammation that's caused by these plaques and not the overall inflammation that's caused by everything else. And that's where 3107 is differentiated. We don't try to focus on any individual inflammatory stimulus. Instead, we act at what's considered the central node of inflammation by preventing the production of TNF-alpha. Thus, we block inflammation from all stimuli. Kong, you have called inflammation the root of many evils. It looks as though you're going beyond plaque to the real cause of it, and that is extremely inspiring. Let us turn to Parkinson's for a moment, if we can. Can you tell us what you're finding there? Well, first of all, Parkinson's is a very difficult to treat disease with few therapeutic options. In fact, the standard of care today is a drug called levodopa that was first introduced over five decades ago. So in our recent phase two trial, we found that patients treated with the combination of 3107 and levodopa experienced greater motor control than those that were treated with levodopa alone. These patients experienced a three points improvement on the Parkinson's disease rating scale, which is a clinically meaningful improvement. But furthermore, patients under the age of 70, which presumably means they have less advanced disease progression, experience twice that level of motor control improvements, right? So big deal 
In previous interviews, Kong, you have said that you're the most excited at the Parkinson's indication. Can you tell us why and how that may have changed with the new data? Well, Craig, you have a great memory there. Yes, I am very excited about our Parkinson's program. I believe that we can help the million or so Americans with Parkinson's with 3107 as soon as 2024. And that's because our phase three trials for Parkinson's are expected to be just three months long, perhaps extending to six months at most. That means that we can conduct these trials in 2023 and then submit them to the FDA for approval as early as 2024, right? And if it's approved and successful, any 3107 could become the first new therapeutic for Parkinson's since the advent of levodopa five decades ago. That's what makes me so excited. Kong, you've already touched upon some activities that are going to be taking place in 2023. Sounds absolutely fascinating. Give us some more detail. In 2023, what can we expect? We are looking for a very exciting year ahead. First up, we will be presenting the full Parkinson's findings at the International ADPD Conference in Sweden, scheduled for the last week of March. Right? And then sometime between March and June, we hope to release data for BIV201 in phase two ascites trial. And then of course, in the third quarter, that's when we expect to release data from our pivotal phase three trial for Alzheimer's. So exciting catalysts, exciting times for the company and our shareholders in 2023. No doubt about it, Kong. Thank you so much for doing this interview. BioV is a very compelling biotech. Craig, thank you so much for having me here today to discuss our work.